What was it that attracted you to get into real estate in the first place? I just wanted to help some people. I was actually a doula for two and a half years. What did you think you were getting into? And then what did you find out later you actually got into? You have to sell yourself. I didn't know people get into it to make like just oodles and oodles of money. Do you feel better about that as you look ahead towards your goals of, of 24 deals this year? Yes. <laughs> All right, you guys, welcome back. Today I have, honestly, one of my favorite students, Mariah. Is it Gossett? Did I say it right? You did, yes. Wow. Luckily, you don't have my last name, which is impossible to say, but welcome. I appreciate you jumping on today. And uh, for context, share with people, where do you sell real estate? Um, I sell real estate in Boise, Idaho, um, and the Treasure Valley. So we have a few surrounding communities that I also help. Nice. And how long have you been doing it now? Uh, two and a half years. Nice. So just like I was, we were talking about off air, what I want to do, Mariah, is just kind of walk people through the last two and a half years and kind of give people an inside look, because I think the value that people get from these interviews are from people that are either thinking about getting into the business or, yeah. or they're been in the business, Mariah, and they're not reaching the levels of success that they want. So they're hoping to learn from other agents like yourself and what their journey has looked like. So bring us back two and a half years ago and tell us what what was it that attracted you to get into real estate in the first place? Yeah, um, I just wanted to help some people. So um, I I used to do, um, the only two other main careers I've had is um, helping to deliver babies and, nice. um, and landscape. So I'm not afraid of hard work, both of those very hard work, um, labor intensive, but I love, anyway, I loved helping people. I was tired of being up at two in the morning to run out the door to help deliver a baby. Um, but I love the aspect of helping, helping people and helping families. So I thought, Hey, real estate, I can help people figure out what has meaning and value to them, help, um, navigate and advocate for them through that process and help make it happen for them. So that is there. There's a longer version. Of yeah, I love it. I love it. So were you were you um, a nurse? Is that what you were doing specifically, or what were you doing? No, I was. Uh, I was actually a doula for two and a half years. Um, I have my own business, and so oh, cool. uh, yeah, doulas help. Uh, they're it's very similar. <laughs> You're hired as a third party to the experience of having a baby, um, but it's it's evidence based. So I would attend births in hospitals, home birth, and birth centers. And just like someone hires an agent to help them through the home process, they hire a doula. Um, so that's kind of the big connection. Then I did go to midwifery school Got and it. help deliver babies in that avenue. And by then it was three and a half years, 60 babies. I was like, I'm really tired. Yeah. So um, there's that. If anyone's having a baby, I'm going to use this plug. Please hire a doula. Evidence-based, better outcomes for mom and babies across the board. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that. So um, the thing that I, for some reason, Mariah, I keep having this conversation over the last couple of weeks, but um, it seems to keep coming up because I think the reality is so many great, great people. And I think you would agree. A lot of good people come into this industry. I think thinking it's one thing and then quickly finding out it's a whole nother thing. Was that your experience when you got into the business? Absolutely, Brandon. <laughs> So let's talk through that a little bit. I, I really, because yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in really, I think what, what's, what's becoming clear to me is like my work is like right there when someone's thinking about getting in the business. I just think the industry, Mariah, can do a better job setting people up for success. So what was your experience? What did you think you were getting into? And then what did you find out later you actually got into? Yeah. Uh, well, I thought I was getting into helping people, which, which you absolutely are. Um, but first, you have to sell yourself and, and someone that you are the person to help them. And I, I just didn't think about that, I guess. Um, and I, I've been in retail landscape sales before. I've done other things. I, I did always do well, um, but I, I didn't think of it as that. Um, I honestly didn't know like the money piece in real estate. I didn't, I, it sounds ridiculous. I'm embarrassed to admit, I didn't know people get into it to make like just oodles and oodles of money. Um, and I was honestly, I walked out of a meeting with other agents and I was like, this is gross. 
I don't want to be here because it seemed like, what about the people? What, how about helping those people? And so, um, so what I thought I was helping people, then I realized, oh, it's a little different. Um, and finally, I'm realizing it is a sales business. You have to, it is a direct outbound sales business, Brandon. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, the thing is, and so I want to, I want to I stay here for just a second. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I think that people like they're just understanding of what it means to be a salesperson. Like the, there's just a negative connotation towards that. Like, Ooh, it just feels icky. And I don't want to be a salesperson. Um, but I think what, and I want to get to this in a second, my interpretation of what I believe a salesperson is and what they should be is something that people should be very proud of. And this is somebody who's a leader in the community that's serving the community that is not convincing anybody of anything, but it's like serving people at the highest level. Uh, that's to me what a great salesperson is. But I want to go back to just a second. This, this thing I wrote down, and I think it is the absolute problem with people looking to get in the business. And it's this thing around like servicing people inbound versus outbound. Here's what I mean. What people think, and I want your honest opinion, help me articulate this to the audience if you could and i know you will when people think about real estate they think it's more of an inbound type business like this watch this so you go work at a retail store people are walking into your store and then you're helping to serve them people can wrap their head around that even take uh selling cars right you go work at a dealership people are walking into the dealership you're helping them make it good people can make the, you know they can wrap their head around all of that those are all examples of an inbound business. What you said, and what I agree with, is people do not understand or realize they're getting into an outbound sales business. Meaning, when you pass your exam and you're like, yippee, I'm in real estate, nobody reaches out to you. Nobody walks in your store. No one's coming to your house. No one's emailing you. The only chance you have at selling a house is you have to reach outbound to people. Would you agree? And do you want to add any like, color to that from your perspective? Yeah. Um, yes, I absolutely agree. Um, I feel almost lucky to have some of the transactions I had because yeah, you have to reach out to people. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where I want to go after that, but it is, it is different than I realized getting in. I, I don't even, there just was kind of a black hole of right no knowledge. So, well, and that's just what I, I mean, that's what I've come to realize is what it is, you know, cause yeah. everybody can wrap their, nobody would watch this. People would do so much better in real estate. If they got their license, they got dressed up, they went into an office and people were walking into the office saying, hi, Mariah, I would like to buy a house. Can you help me? People would be right. fine. Like this would be the best industry for so many great people getting in, but that's simply not the case. When we say a direct outbound sales business, this means you have to be the one to initiate contact. This is where all the problems start for people like in the industry because yep. they don't understand what it means to be a salesperson. They have a negative mindset about being in sales. It makes them feel icky reaching out to people. They think they're bothering people. They don't understand how to serve. I mean, this is why the failure rate is happening like, like it is. So anyway, I'll digress. So when you got in the business, you realize, okay, nobody's calling me. I'm going to have to do something before you and I started working together. Like what was the lead generation plan? Like how were you going out there marketing yourself and getting clients? Yeah. Um, I did call us. Uh, I had a few sphere calls. Um, they didn't really go that well. Uh, cause I was told to use a certain script from a certain brokerage and, um, uh, it was awkward and it left yeah. them feeling awkward. And I did some door knocking and I actually love door knocking and I was pretty good at it at a capture rate of information. No idea how to follow up properly. Uh, that was unfortunate. So, um, but if you do follow up, like for the one person that I followed up with of the hundreds of names I got, I 
helped her buy a house last year, 12 months wow. later after meeting her. So um, yeah, there was definitely a lack of direction of appropriate scripting. And again, why I got in was I love to help people. And a lot of uh, the scripts that I was given, I thought were too pushy and they were odd where um, when I helped deliver babies, I got into it because I was like, the numbers have to be right. The American maternity system statistics are wrong. And I was like, I can get into this other industry where I can be nerdy about these numbers. And here's what this, the statistics say, and here's how I can help you. Um, but I, I did not have the scripting to relay that. And I did not have, honestly, the organized information that your program offers to become an expert to truly help them and, and relay to the, have them understand I'm there to help. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And I guess let's unpack that a little bit. So when, when officially did we start working together? Um, the summer of 2021. Got it. Okay. So I want to walk through kind of some of the bigger things that you've learned that like what your business looks like today that mm -hmm. maybe it didn't look like before, you know, and let's just start yeah. with, I guess your mindset. Cause I think this is the most important piece. It sounds like you've accepted the fact that, listen, I'm in sales and I'm proud of it. Uh, I'm not going to hide behind it. I'm going to serve people. I'm going to help people. That mission is going to stay true. What is your mindset now when you wake up in the morning about generating business in this industry? Um, that I need to call some people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. That's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I've got to call some people and it's okay to call them because I have something of value to offer. That's right. And I can really help them. That's beautiful. And that's really my point earlier about being proud about what we do because we help people. But if you sit back and wait for people to call you, you won't be able to help anybody because no one's ever going to reach out to you. And this is just a simple concept. I just really want newer agents to understand that it's okay for you to reach out to people you know, to reach out to people you don't know, and offer to help them. You know, And I think if you can just get through that, you'll find great success like you have. So let's walk through what sources of business are you working right now? Are you working past clients for sell by owners? What, what kind of lead sources are you working right now? Um, past clients. Um, is past client. I've now done it long enough. I was able to sell my first buyer's home. Um, and uh, past clients, um, sphere and referrals. And I finally have dipped my toe into for sale by owners. Um, and you know what, you guys, you got to make the calls. I made four phone calls. I got three appointments. Two of them kept them. Wow. That's it. You just have to call people. So, so let's talk about that. And that good for you. And that, that is really, really cool that you are, are to that point now. Right. And so walk us through the conversation that you have with for sale by owners. First off, I get, well, I guess we covered that, like how you mustered up the courage to pick up the phone. I think we were, we're past that. Like, you just got to do it. Now, when you've done it, given what you believe in, like, how do you handle these conversations? Are you applying a bunch of pressure and you're very annoying? Probably not. What are you actually doing? Tell us. No, um, it's really reaching out and seeing how they're doing. And I, do you want to know specifically for sale by owners or other... I mean, generally speaking, when you, when you look at the, the like, okay, I, I know I have to go out there and prospect for new business. I know that. Let me put that aside. Yeah. When I'm doing this, when I'm messaging people, when I'm meeting with people, when I'm emailing, texting, you know, messaging people, like when I'm communicating, what is just your mindset when you go into these conversations? To figure out what they need That's and right. to see if I'm the person to help make whatever it is that they need happen. And so sometimes that might be a no and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference is when you're new, you're so desperate for business. You have, and for me, I had what I feel was very weird, pushy scripts. I also had someone that said, you have to call everyone in your phone, everyone. I don't know that that was the best, yeah. uh, best setup there. Cause that sets you up for some awkward conversations. So um, everyone is not your client and that's okay. And it, and it's okay to get the no's because the no's get you to yeses. So it's really figuring out what they need and are you the person to help make that happen? And, and also having the skill set and the information to be the expert to actually help them. Um, 
which I love about Listening Agent Academy because it, it gives me the conf it gives me the background and the foundation to have the confidence to say, I'm here to help you because I can. I have all these tools and this organizational template, this organized template to move through it. My move okay. myself and the client through listing their home. Yeah, I love that. And, and that's exactly and, and you know, obviously I I knew you were gonna answer that way, but that's the approach that okay. we take to this business. I mean, because that's the thing is like we're all we're doing. And this is what I try to help agents understand. All we're doing is we're reaching out to see who needs help and are we the right person to help them get what they want? Yes or no, it doesn't matter. That's the approach that we take. So, you know, I guess for where you're at now with the mindset that you have, like with your new skills, when you look ahead, what are some of the things and accomplishments and goals that you maybe you think about? Let's just talk about 2022 for a second. Are there things in this business that you're 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 um, looking to accomplish? Yes. Um, Walk us through your goals for 2022. Sure. Uh, my goal for 2022 uh, is 24 transactions. Love it. Um, and that's. Um, I, do you want the back? Do you want like the backstory or just moving forward goals? Well, we're gonna go backwards too. Yeah. Tell me oh. through that. Yeah. Actually, absolutely. Okay. Uh, first two years was just five transactions T total In total. Got it. Okay. That's it. Um, and then the last, um, few months has been three transactions. So I joined in, in end of summer, 2021 um, to listening agent Academy. <clears throat> and then I had, um, three transactions in the first four months. And I actually closed those in three and a half weeks and two of them closed the same day. That's wow. really fun. Yeah, that is. So that, yeah, that was exciting after like the cricket two years. Um, anyway, and so 2022, I'm like, okay, if I like quadrupled that, let's just keep quadrupling. And um, so I would love to do 24 transactions this year. And I, I, two, I have one pending and I'm waiting to hear today. We should be going pending on another transaction. Um, today. So that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And, and I know you can do that because based on what you've been learning to do for the last couple of months, like, do you feel like a new, like sense of, of confidence because you're in control where, you know, listen, I can go after and I can help this certain demographic of people. I'm in control of my destiny, of my actions of my behaviors and my attitude. Do you feel better about that as you look ahead towards your goals of, of 24 deals this year? Yes, yeah. in a really, really big way. Um, and not just real estate related. Like, I feel like I'm a better parent. I feel like I'm a better spouse. Um, like getting up and making the bed in the morning and just like, we're going to do it. Like from like morning till night, I, I feel a greater sense of confidence and like things are going to be okay. <laughs> and I they're okay that. right now in this moment. You know, and so something that I say all the time, and I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but I'm curious to get your thoughts on this is I think that confidence that you're talking about in my experience comes through massive action. You know, like people are looking for, for like the motivation and they wait a long time, you know, like they only do, they only wake up and make the bed when they feel like it, you know, they only work out when they feel. So, so what I've learned in my life is that, all of the motivation, inspiration, what you're talking about comes through so much doing. Are you finding that to be true for you? Like momentum breeds momentum? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You just have to do it. You've got to, I rip off the bandaid and just go. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. So I guess my last question for you is, had you gone, if you could go back two and a half years ago, get your license all over again, what would be one piece of advice that you would tell yourself that other new people looking to get their license right now could benefit from? Um, that you really do need to have a daily mentor, uh, coach, a team, something. If, you know, you haven't done it before. So what makes you think you can just like walk in and, and know what you're doing and serve people at a high level and then therefore serve your, yourself and your family at a high level? Like that's just, that doesn't make sense. And, and I knew that going in um, a little bit but I didn't know the um, great array of options there are within this business of types of agents and types of mentors. And um, 
the reverse selling is much more in alignment with me because I'm like, no, we have to help the people. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, so if I could go back, I would have loved to see your YouTube video like two years earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's um, funny. And and I would have I would have signed up six months earlier than the first YouTube video that I saw. I would have just jumped in. Um, that's what I would tell myself. Wow. Oh, that means a lot. And and I really enjoy working with you. Like every conversation I tell you, it's just like, I just, you, you just have a, you have a great attitude towards all of the things that we work through. And the future just gets me so excited, Mariah, for what you can achieve um, that the last two and a half years will just be a distant memory because of all the success, because of how you're so willing to help people serve people first. And that just comes through you know, and so I'm just so excited to be like by your side as you keep growing this business. Uh, and I know you will. And I know you will. So thanks for popping on here. I'm sure you're going to help other people inspire other people. So I want to thank you for taking some time today and do this with me. Of course. Thank you, Brandon. Absolutely. So we'll talk to you soon. I'm sure we'll see you on a coaching call, Mariah. If people do want to connect with you, bounce stuff off of you, ask you some questions, yep. can they find you on Instagram or Facebook? Like where's the best place to connect? Uh, yeah. Instagram or Facebook. Um, I have my baby Instagram that I finally got with 2022. Nice. Uh, so yeah, Mariah underscore, underscore Gossett at Instagram um, or Mariah Gossett Sutton on Facebook. You can DM me. Um, and Olive Branch Realty Group um, here in Idaho is my my business group. So um, I'm happy to help. So awesome. Thanks for that, Mariah. So appreciate it. You guys, if you guys have any questions or you want to reach out to Mariah, you want to ask her what what what's working for her, feel free to reach out. We appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys next time. Mariah, thank you so much. Thank you, Brandon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.